I'm Stuart Elliott, vicar in Bethesda Coed. As a child, church, God, Jesus, it was all a golden thread woven through life. And I don't remember a time it was not there. Sometimes I'm grateful for that. I grew up on a diet of teaching that was probably not always, but what I could remember could be summed up as how terrible we are. I never really felt that awful. How good God is, but I had no experience of that really. And how grateful we should be. Well, why? Many of my friends went off to a radical thing every year called Greenbelt. It took place every summer in the August bank holiday. It took me much longer to find it, but it is now a once a year pilgrimage to a place which has been for me for some time a companion along the way, along with those I've met there. And reading the descriptions of the talks of this year, one line caught my eye, described my whole experience of Jesus in one succinct sentence. I hope that when we read the creed together on a Sunday, you'll notice how it really doesn't say very much at all. It sounds like a legal text with the whys and wherefores, and it particularly glosses over the life and teaching of Jesus which has been reduced to a comma between the Virgin Mary and Pontius Pilate. So I spend most of my time when preparing writing, trying to expand the comma. That's what makes that difference to me. Like the women and men we hear who meet Jesus and are transformed. The more I read and pay careful attention to what the text actually says, its context, how it's written, we need those critical skills of reading closely as in Lectio Divina, sitting with the text, a divine reading. So now I see Jesus, not as the soft focus image of fairy stories to entertain the Sunday school, but as the one who got stuck in with the harsh, grim reality of life as it was. Now if the creed contained all of that, we'd still be here until next week. But the love which Jesus showed was a tough love, which pointed out the harsh reality, the truth of a situation. It got straight to the point. Wouldn't it be great if all our interactions were not an attempt to play to someone's ego or carefully sidestepping the issue so as not to offend them? Jesus seems to manage it effortlessly, offending those who needed offending, so that their actions would be brought to light. Yet it was in love and full of compassion and humility this is the Jesus who weeps over Jerusalem, who is angered at the injustice of the temple taxation. This is not the Jesus of the creed who was born and then one comma later handed over to be crucified under Pontius Pilate. No, this is the Jesus who, when he met a man sat with his excuses by the pool of Bethsaida, asked him if he actually wanted to be healed and told him to get up and walk. This is Jesus who calls the ordinary folk away from their livelihood to walk with him on the way. This is Jesus who tells Peter to get out of the boat and come to him across the water. This is Jesus who sits with the condemned woman before those who want to stone her to death slowly melt away in their own guilt. This is Jesus who recognises a woman in pain in the crowd and despite all those around him, calls her to him that she might be healed. This is Jesus who enters the houses of countless people which others would not dare to enter and sits down to a meal with them. This is Jesus who tells the woman in front of him the harsh reality of her situation and yet as she responds in similar fashion, she's rewarded by her bravery in standing up to him rather than being chastised. This is Jesus who sees those around him as equal and not beneath his attention, as worthy and not beyond redemption, without prejudice. This is Jesus whose harsh words condemn only those actions who condemn themselves. Yet when those too recognise the way they're living, Jesus welcomes them in. Kevin asked me what different difference Jesus has made. Beyond that comma, I found a tough and uncompromising love. 
a compassion delivered with real humility, born of living in the harsh reality of life, which we too experience. Underneath the punctuation of the creed, it really is something to believe in.